Hey, calculus class. Today is topic 16, tangent lines and normal lines. So what we currently know about tangent lines. Well, we know that tangent lines touch a curve at a point P, but does not intersect the curve at point P. So this pink line right here. And we have seen this picture before. Tangent lines have a slope M that is the limit of the slopes of the secant lines, PQ, as Q is getting closer and closer and closer to P. That is, M equals the limit as H approaches zero of F of A plus H minus F of A all over H. This should look familiar. This is your derivative. This means that when we want the slope of the tangent line, we have to find the derivative at that point. And we have been doing this. But now we get to finally find the slope of the tangent line using the shortcut rules. So for our first example, what is the equation of the tangent line on the curve at the given point? So first thing is I need to find the derivative of f of x. So using the power rule, I'm going to get 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 to, as the derivative. To find the slope of the tangent line at the given x value, you are going to take the x value of your point, plug it in to your derivative to get the slope. So f prime of 2 is going to give me 3 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 1. After simplifying, I get a slope of 5. Now find the coordinate point if needed. Then write the equation using point slope form. Now, luckily, I already have the y value at 2 on my original curve, so I do not have to find the y value at x equals 2. But sometimes you'll only be given x equals 2, and if you are not given the y value, you will have to plug in x equals 2 into the original function to get the y value. So my equation of my tangent line will be y minus 3 equals 5 times the quantity of x minus 2. And of course, you can stop here. Only reason why you would want to solve for y is if it's a multiple choice question and all of your answers are in y equals mx plus b form. OK, second example. The curve y equals x all over 1 plus x squared is called a serpentine. Find an equation of the tangent line to this curve at the point 3 comma 0 0.3. Then illustrate by graphing the curve and the tangent line on the same screen. So before I find the derivative, the graph of the serpentine function looks like this. As you can see, it kind of looks like this weird snaky shape, and that's where they decided to name it serpentine. All right, so to find the derivative, you have to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top is 1 times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, all over the bottom squared. And go ahead and do some simplifying and combine like terms to get 1 minus x squared all over 1 plus x squared quantity squared. Now I need to go ahead and find the slope of my tangent line at x equals 3. So I'm going to plug x equals 3 into my derivative. Simplify, and I keep going. So I get negative 8 over 100, or if you really wanted to, you could write it as negative 0.08. Now I can write the equation of my tangent line. I already have the y value at x equals 3. I have my slope. So my equation of my tangent line is y minus 3 equals negative 0 0.08 times the quantity x minus 0.3. Now on your graphing calculator, you want to graph the original function and the tangent line so that you should see your graph looking something like this. And for those of you who have the Inspire, I will put on a video on how to get the tangent line on your graphing calculator. <clears throat> okay, what is the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point? 
why don't you go ahead and press pause and see if you can do this one on your own. All right, let's see how we did. So since we want the slope first, we must find dy dx. And in this problem, that means we will need to use implicit differentiation. As you can see, x and y are on the same side. y is not by itself. So to take the derivative in terms with respect to x, we got the derivative of x to the third, two thirds. So two thirds times x to the negative one third, plus the derivative of y with respect to x, two thirds y to the negative one third times our dy dx equals the derivative of our constant, which is zero. Now I can go ahead and solve for dy dx. And since each term has a two thirds in common, I can factor out the two thirds. And when I divide both sides by the two thirds, the two thirds is gonna cancel. So I am left with x to the negative one third plus y to the negative one third times dy dx equals zero. Now, now I'm gonna go ahead and solve for dy dx. So subtract the x to the negative one third, divide by y to the negative one third, and get rid of these negative exponents. So basically they flip flop. So now I have that the slope of the tangent line is going to be y, negative y to the one third all over x to the one third. Now I can go ahead and find the actual slope by plugging in negative three square root three for x and notice I have y this time in my derivative. So I will plug in the y value of the point in for y, which in this case is one. So when I do that, <clears throat> I will get one negative one to the one third all over negative three times the square root of three all to the one third. After simplifying, I get negative one over the quantity negative three times the square root of three to the one third power. Now, since I have a one third um, power on the bottom, I can rationalize the denominator because this is just ugly. I guess you could keep it like this or turn it into a decimal if you like. It's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna rationalize this. So multiply the top and the bottom by the denominator to the two thirds power. After simplifying, I now have the following. I'm gonna go ahead and use all of my exponent rules and radical rules. So I'm gonna have negative three to the two thirds power, which is the same thing as the cube root of negative three squared, times the cube root of square root of three squared, all over, the negatives cancel, so on the bottom I'm left with three square root three. Now I can go ahead and take the square of negative three and the square of the square root of three. So now I have the cube root of nine times the cube root of three, all over three cube root three. And since these both are cube roots, I can multiply the nine and the three. The cube root of 27 and the cube root of 27 is three and the threes cancel. So now I have my slope of one over the square root of three. Now I can write my equation with my point, which was the negative three times the square root of three, and my y value of one, and my slope of my tangent line, one over the square root of three. Horizontal tangent lines. Any horizontal line has a slope of zero. In other words, the derivative is zero, or f prime is equal to zero. So these are four scenarios where you will have horizontal tangent lines. You'll have them at the valleys, you'll have them at the hills, and then you'll have them at, uh, basically this is kind of like the cubic function, this weird squiggly S shape. Those are also horizontal tangent lines. So at what point does the curve have horizontal tangents? So your first step is to find the derivative. So using the power rule, we get f prime to equal 4x cubed minus 21x squared plus 4x. Now since I want horizontal tangent lines, that means I'm looking for where the derivative is zero. So you're gonna set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x. 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and factor out an x. And so now I know that this factor of x is equal to zero and factor 4x squared minus 21x plus 4 is also equal to 0, but it is not factorable, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve for x. After simplifying down the quadratic formula, you would get approximately 5.0521 and 0.1979. So this means that we have at the x values 0, and 5.0521 and 0.1979, we have horizontal tangent lines. Now, because the direction says at what points, that means we need to find the y values at these x values. If it just says where is there a horizontal tangent line, you could just leave it with the x values. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and find the y values at those x values. Oh. And apparently I accidentally forgot to do x equals 0. So at x equals 0, there is 1 at 0, 15. And if I wanted to look at this as a graph, and I know I'm forgetting the one that's at the 0, and I'm sorry about that. But this is what your original curve looks like. And we have tangent line here at the, val at the valley. And then you have a tangent line at this s. You actually have two of them. Normal lines. The definition of a normal line is a line that is perpendicular to a tangent line at a given point on the curve. So your normal line is perpendicular to your tangent line at that same point of tangency. So we have to recall that from Algebra 1, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So that means we can find the slope of our tangent line and once we have the slope of our tangent line, we can find the opposite reciprocal to get the slope of the normal line. So in other words, if the slope of the tangent line is f prime, then the slope of the normal line is negative 1 over f prime. So what is the equation of the normal line of the curve at the given point? So we're going to need to go ahead and find the derivative, which means quotient rule. So we're going to take the derivative of the top, which is 4, times the bottom, which is x squared plus 1, minus the top, 4x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, all over the bottom squared. Go ahead and simplify and combine like terms to get negative 4x squared plus 4 all over x squared plus 1 uh, quantity squared. Now I can go ahead and plug in 2 for x to get the slope of the tangent line and simplify to get negative 12 over 25. Now this is my slope of my tangent line. So to find the slope of the normal line, I'm going to take the opposite reciprocal of this slope. So that means that the slope of my normal line is going to be 25 over 12. Now since I have my slope of my normal line and I do have the point, I can write the equation of my line. So my final answer is y minus 8 fifths equal to 25 over 12 times x minus 2. All right, I hope you enjoyed uh, tangent lines and normal lines and have a good night.